The Son of Man is indeed Lord of the Sabbath. This is radical stuff, isn't it? Notice his enemies are the establishment, are they not? The people whose traditions had bound them. Okay, let's go through some of this. At that time then, you're getting hungry on the Saturday, that's the Sabbath. Sunday, of course, is not the Sabbath. It's not a new Sabbath. It's the first day of the week, suitable day, I think, for reflecting on the resurrection, the new beginning. 888, you know, is the number of Jesus. It's the new beginning. So we're now into a brand new mode, a new key, if you think in terms of music. The first day of the week, the brilliant new beginning. Why not? And every Sunday they had a collection. They brought the money to the church so there wouldn't be collections when Paul came. That's rather reasonable in terms of very probably indicating a first day of the week. And that doesn't mean on one of the Sabbaths, people mistranslated that, oh, oh, one of the Sabbaths. No, no, no. On the first day, Mia is feminine. First day is understood there. On the first day of the week, because Sabaton can mean week sometimes. So every first day of the week. There it is. That's a reasonable basis for meeting on a Sunday, but it's not a transferred Sabbath. We know that. So the Pharisees then, they are the hardcore, solid, legalistic people, are they not? They're going to keep that law of Moses, come what may. The Sadducees were much more liberal, you know, they were the much freer party. They didn't even believe in the resurrection, the Sadducees. They were very new agey. Pharisees were keeping the Bible as they thought it should be kept, and they are the opposition to Jesus here. And oh, look at your disciples, your students, Jesus, look what they're doing. They're breaking the Sabbath. What are we going to do about that? The critics. And he says to them, have you not read? I like that. Let's appeal to the very Bible that you believe in. Haven't you read what it says in the Bible, in the Old Testament Hebrew uh, scriptures? David then was able to break the Sabbath or infringe on these laws because his... uh, doing stuff on on Saturday that he shouldn't do. I think he's a Christian before Christ, like Abraham. David is a Christian figure. Now, he wasn't entirely in line with all the non-violence that Jesus later taught. I understand all of that. He made dreadful mistakes. But he's a man after God's own heart, despite the awful thing he did on one occasion. The disciples then are only doing what David did. Why not? And then Jesus winds up saying that he's Lord of the Sabbath. That's very provocative, isn't it? He decides what you do with the Sabbath. What? He then says he's greater than the temple. What? Greater than the temple? And greater than Solomon? And greater than Moses? Who is this person? I hope you're excited about Jesus. We're not, as Unitarians, as excited about Jesus as we should be, I think. It could just be the new covenant. What do you think? Doesn't sound like a repetition of the old, does it? The Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath, you're going to insist on it, is a sign of the Old Covenant forever. As long as the Old Covenant was enforced. But it's not any longer enforced. So have a complete shift of thinking. Because if you keep the Sabbath yourself diligently, you're then imposing that on your children, perhaps unwillingly. That's going to be a major fact in their social life. Are they going to go through life as Sabbath keepers? They can't go and play games on Friday night. They couldn't go to weddings. I know this from my own experience. Couldn't go to weddings on Saturday. Oh, no, no. Because we're keeping the Sabbath. We should have been keeping the new moons. We weren't, though. Very illogically, we should have been keeping the new moons. But do you really want your neighbors to watch you gazing at the new moon once a month? Is that a good model for Christianity? I don't think so. We are all priests and kings, are we not? All the Christians are priests and kings, according to Revelation 1, Revelation 5, priests and kings, although we're not of the Levitical family, it's quite true, we're not all Jewish people, but we are priests and kings in training. We are the elite few, the privileged servant group, by the way, very privileged and yet servant group. To make it simple for people, is the difference between letter and spirit. The letter of the law requires that you keep the Sabbath on the seventh day that you also keep the new moons monthly and you also keep the annual Sabbath. The letter of the law requires it. The letter of the law requires it. If you want to be part of the covenant, you must be physically circumcised as a male. You must. There's no way around that. However, Paul then is a radical changer of everything. Paul says this famous thing in Galatians, if you are going to get physically circumcised, don't do it. You're going to have to keep the whole law. Don't keep it. I've been constantly asking people over the years, what is this whole law which you're forbidden to keep? 
And nobody can say anything. They don't know. The answer is it's those things which break or make such a break and division between Jews and Gentiles, isn't it? Sabbath keeping, food laws, holy days, new moons. That's what keeps you apart. We don't want that. And we did in the Armstrong days because we didn't know enough. Right. When we read the Ten Commandments, the fourth one clearly said we had to keep the Sabbath. Well, surely everybody knows the Ten Commandments. But we didn't know about this custodial guard. So Paul says, what was the law about, this additional law, added 430 years later after Abraham? What was that about? It was a custodial guard to take the young child to school. That's what the word means there, a pedagogue. So you got escorted, if you were a young teenager, by this employed Roman official, probably, who escorted you to, church, to school. But when you got to school or grew beyond that age, you went under that law. So if you go back under that custodial guard, you're saying, I want to be immature. Because there was a change in the priesthood, there's also a change in the law. Why not? If God wants to do it that way, I can go with that. No, well, exactly. Why not? But God can do that. I can see it. We have, what we have to do is to say that the death and resurrection of Jesus is only part of the gospel. And they use the text in Romans. How can they hear without a preacher... How can they hear about Jesus? No, no, it doesn't say that. How can they hear Jesus? The verbs are, are wrongly translated there, in the NIV particularly. You don't have to just hear about Jesus, that he died for you. You've got to hear him preach the gospel of the kingdom. That's what I'm going to do on Saturday. Everything goes back to the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom and the parable of the sower. And in, right there in 2 Samuel 7, it talks about God sowing the royal family. I like that. That's what he's doing with Jesus and the parable itself.